right, welcome everybody to Cornerstone tonight. So glad you're here. We'll open up by standing together and we'll sing song number two, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise his name, I'm fixed upon it, name of God's redeemed. Hitherto thy love has blessed me, thou hast brought me to this place, and I know thy hand will bring me safely home by thy good grace. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger, bought me with his precious blood oh to grace how great a debtor daily i'm constrained to be and thy goodness like a fetter bind my wandering heart to thee prone to wander lord i feel it prone to leave the god i love here's my heart oh take and seal it seal it for thy courts above good singing remain standing as we open in prayer brother mitchell please our heavenly father tonight we ask your blessing upon the service the music the preaching and all that's done that christ would be glorified strengthen us from your word tonight make us ready and prepared uh, to reach a lost and dying world and we ask for that in jesus name amen all right, you can be seated. Good to have you all here this evening. Hopefully you're uh, having a great week. Tonight we're going to read a missionary prayer letter, and it's from the Harris family, our missionaries to Peru. And it reads, Thank you for your interest in staying up to date with the ministry here in the jungle of Peru. We are in the middle of and in the most difficult month of rainy season. This causes mudslides, overflowing riverbanks, blocked roads, sicknesses, and a lot of mud. Peru is now in the third wave of the coronavirus, and it has spread five times worse than the previous waves. A majority of the country has been put on the level of high alert due to the spread of the virus. They are now vaccinating all children ages 5 to 11. Limited capacity, double mask, and proof of full vaccination must be shown to enter in closed buildings. I was involved in two, two funerals this weekend and had the opportunity to share the story of Lazarus' death in John 11. I found it interesting that many times our human nature sees all the negativity rather than looking for opportunities to reveal God. John 11:4 states, when Jesus heard that Lazarus was sick, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. God many times uses tragedy and difficult times to reveal himself to us and to others. After Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, it says in verse 45, then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did believed on him. We have been encouraged to see God working in lives even though the times are hard. A couple whom we ministered to over three years ago when they were going through a hard time just visited our house from Huancayo. It's over five hours away. They took the time to look us up and bring us gifts, and we prayed together, thanking God for his goodness. So, as I share the difficult times and prayer requests, please know that we are not complaining or dwelling on the negativity but asking God to use these times as opportunities for more to see the works of God and believe on him. So a couple of prayer requests he gives. Yenny is a single mom with three children who is currently without a job. She has attended our church but has missed lately due to each of them being sick. 
All four of them live in a one-room apartment together in a shared apartment building. We have delivered medicine and food on our visits. Second, uh, Zimona is an elderly lady that lives alone in a muddy shack. She attends our church every possible chance. She is having constant pain in her leg and back. And then thirdly, two families who have lost loved ones and whose funerals were this week, father of Jackie and husband of Jessica. And then he does give a few praises. Says the church remains open and continues to stand on God's word. Our holiday events were a blessing and very well attended. Those who are being discipled and making spiritual decisions. Third, we continue to be grateful to have the opportunity to share the gospel as we share food bags to those in need, along with medicine and other supplies. And then lastly, our daughter Rebecca healed quickly from having COVID back in November with mild symptoms. All four of our children are healthy and living together in an apartment in Watertown, Wisconsin, where Matthew and Katie were able to return to full class schedule this semester. Rebecca and Nathan are looking forward to working to save money to return to classes. And again, that's the Harris family, our missionaries to Peru. And then I do have an update on one of our other missionaries, the Brian Todd family, our missionaries to Costa Rica. His wife um, has uh, fibromyalgia and copper poisoning. And after prayer and seeking counsel, they made the tough decision to return off the field for some time to try to get her um, recovered. It's gonna be a lengthy process. So they're looking to being off the field for at least two to three years. So you wanna be in prayer, especially for his wife, but the Todd family as they seek God's direction and what to do for the next couple years, and then pray for their ministry there in Costa Rica that it would uh, continue and not, uh, not fall apart. All right, let's look to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, we do pray for the Todd family, our missionaries to Costa Rica, as they're having to make some very difficult decisions. We just get, pray that you give them peace on what they have to do, would just reach down and put your hand of healing upon his wife and we just pray that the recovery would go quick more quickly than what they're anticipating just pray for your direction and that you would just continue to be in their ministry in Costa Rica and then we pray for the Harris family in Peru that you would just continue to be with them as they go through COVID restrictions and, and work through those times you would just guide their ministry. We just thank you for what you've done there. We just pray for all our missionaries. And we also pray for our service here tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's turn our song books again. Let's stand and we'll sing song number 358, I Am Thine, O Lord. Let's see, this will be our handshake song. We'll sing all four verses. I am thine, O Lord, I have heard thy voice, and it hold thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith, and be closer drawn to thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer. Blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Song number two. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by thy power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. Draw me near. Blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Turn around and shake hands.
Now on the fourth verse, please. There are depths of love that I cannot know till I cross the narrow sea. There are heights of joy that I may not reach till I rest in peace with thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Good singing. You may be seated, please. All right. Well, good evening. How's everybody doing tonight? Good to see you. And uh, welcome to Cornerstone Baptist Church. There is a lot of things going on, so let me just get right to the announcements. Um, there is a ladies' banquet, mother's daughter, mother daughter's day, mother daughter banquet this Saturday, May fourteenth. It's at ten a.m. And if you haven't done so already, please go by the table. And the adults are seven dollars, and the teens are uh, seven dollars as well. And the children are four dollars a piece. So make sure you sign up, turn your money in uh, at the table tonight. And then the men that volunteered to help, if you would um, be here this Saturday at 9 a.m., that would be great. So if you're volunteered and you're able to make it to help out, just show up here at the cafeteria at 9 a.m. All right, let's see here. If you're still interested in, in working in the bus ministry, the sign-up sheet's in the back. And uh, we're, we're coming up on starting the bus route. We're looking at right now to start it in the middle of June. So we're going to try to get as many workers as we can, and then we'll schedule a meeting with everybody and make sure that we're all on the same page. Men's prayer breakfast is going to be not this Saturday, but the next Saturday. That's May 21st at uh, 9 a.m. No, actually, yep, 9 a.m. in the cafeteria. Um, let's see here. Anyone that's willing and able to afterward is going to be canvassing, um, and if Anybody from the church wants to join us at 11 a.m., we're going to be going canvassing around 11 uh, on that day for the bus ministry. Then we have Saturday Saturation, that's churchwide, May 28th, that's at 9.30, and there may be Tim's Donuts, so we'll just have to show up to find out, all right? And then we have a fifth Sunday service planned for May 29th. May 29th, we're going to have uh, Sunday school at 10 a.m., Sunday morning at 11 a.m., and then right after the morning service, we're going to have a pitch-in uh, meal for the, anyone who stays. And if you can help us out with that, bringing in some food, some side dishes, dessert. I said dessert. Uh, anybody want to bring in dessert? And then um, we'll have a great time together. We have a special treat, uh, May 29th. That's also Memorial Day. Is that Memorial Day? It's the Sunday before Memorial Day, um, Right? All right, you're right. And then, so we have a missionary, the missionary that was supposed to be with us for our missions conference, but got sick. Uh, he couldn't make it. He'll be with us preaching. He's a veteran on Memorial's Day and get a chance for him to present his work. Um, he, he knows that, you know, we, we're in a position where we may not be able to take him on, but he just said, I want as many prayer warriors as I can. Because the good news is he sold his house, and he is, as soon as he signs on the dotted line, close. They're moving to Missouri so we can plant a church to the mission base in Missouri. So I think that's Fort Ravenwood. I believe that's what it's called. But he'll be with us. Looking forward to that. Um, also, this Sunday. This Sunday, one of my preacher friends um, is in the area. He'll be a couple hours away. He called and said if we could use him. He'll be preaching this Sunday. He'll be preaching. Um, uh, Sunday school classes are the same. But he'll be preaching Sunday morning and Sunday night this Saturday. His name's Mike Gross. Mike Gross, and uh, his ministry is he travels around in churches that are in between pastors. He kind of fills in the gap and then kind of counsels them through what to do. And so he'll be with us this Sunday. It's, it's going to be a treat. Looking forward to it. Um, okay, Vacation Bible School, be in prayer for it, uh, June 23rd through 25th. And if you're wanting to help us out, please sign up in the back lobby. And then we're going to have an official training time. It's, it's going to be uh, about an hour, hour and a half. We're going to go through dealing with children. The gospel doesn't change, but the approach needs, needs to be a little bit 
uh, lower to their level. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about how to, how to discipline the kids and the schedules and all of that good stuff and to make sure I have your t-shirt size right, okay? So please, uh, if you're signed up, come to the Vacation Bible School training time. That'll be May 22nd, right after the Sunday morning service. The teams are going to be uh, providing a spaghetti lunch. And anyone that's interested, Vacation Bible School workers or anybody in the church is welcome to, to eat the spaghetti, min- the, uh, spaghetti lunch. And that's going to be on donations, so bring some money to donate. And then I want to remind you of Senior Patriots starting up soon. That the first one's going to be June 18th, and looking forward to a, a great ministry there. Um, just got word uh, before the service that Josh King's procedure was done, and it went well. Um, let's see here. Continue to pray for Christy Bowers, that's Miss Williams' daughter, with... Um, colon cancer and liver cancer it's stage four and they're going to be doing some type of immune therapy immune therapy something like that instead of chemotherapy so pray that that works and pray that that has some positive results be in prayer for benjamin itself that's the weldy's grandson who may need to have his eardrum reconstructed and pray for emily right now or for the baby to flip before delivery almost forgot one thing um the boxes that were there for the kids club tonight. Thank you so much for donating candy and little Debbie's uh, to the the carnival tonight. The kids are going to enjoy it. Um, We're going to keep the boxes out there because we need people's help to bring in stuff for vacation Bible school. So if you wanted to bring in bags of individually wrapped candy, um, any type of dollar store, smaller toys for our vacation Bible school that they can, you know, earn, points or money to purchase things from the store, please just donate that and drop that off in the boxes. All right, well, we'll go ahead and uh, pray for our offering, then have the offering. Thank you for the salvation you provided that we certainly do not deserve. And then after, after that, you provide for us, you care for us. And as we get back to you, just in love and obedience, we pray that you would guide our decisions and what we do with the money. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's turn in our songs books once again, or look on the screen. We'll sing, be singing song number 511, Now I Belong to Jesus. Let's all stand together as we sing all three verses, song number 511. <clears throat> Jesus, my Lord, will love me forever. From him no power of evil can say. Jesus 
has saved me, freed me from sin that long had enslaved me, for his precious blood he gave to redeem, now I belong to him, now I belong to Jesus, Jesus belongs to May be seated. All right, it is good to see you here tonight. Looking forward to uh, continuing on with our study in the book of James. James chapter 5 is where we'll be tonight. James chapter 5, we're going to, Lord willing, f- be finishing up what we started last week, talking about the reality of riches. The reality of riches. Perception, perception from the world and others concerning riches is that it's the answer for everything, right? If I just had more money, then all my problems would be solved. And uh, just so happens some of the most uh, troubled people there are today are the celebrities, the millionaires, the multi-billionaire CEOs, the uh, multi-million dollar contracted athletes. Money is not the answer to everything. Money is not the answer to everything. And the perception was it is, But the reality that we see about it in Scripture is completely different than what the perception is. We talked about last week, we started off in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse number 10, telling us that the root of all evil is what? The love of money. I know it's a Wednesday, but come on, stay with me, okay? Stay with me, let me know you're still there with me. The love of money. It is not wrong to have money, it's wrong for money to have us. When we, when we lose sight of money as a tool, it does have a purpose. I mean, our, isn't it wonderful that we can take money in our treasure and we take that and put it into something, invest it into souls when we send missionaries around the world and we have a Christian school and other things that it goes to. It definitely is a good tool. But when we lose sight of it as a tool to take care of our family, to sustain the cause of Christ, and we just get consumed with the love of it, then it becomes a problem. It definitely becomes a problem. We see, uh, we, I'm not going to go through all of this, but we see that it's a continual problem of a lot of things that we have today in our world that are sins. We, we mentioned a couple of them. That's why we have drugs, human trafficking, kidnapping, robberies, wars, illegal deals and trading, embezzlement, and everything else. It involves money and the love of money. Uh, money having the wrong view of money will lead us into covetousness. We talked about that last week. Uh, It compels people to err from the faith. Apparently in our text, some have erred from the faith because of this idea of being consumed and loving money. And then I drew out from from the verse in 1 Timothy 6, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Do you know what money and being consumed with it and having a love for it is a, is a root problem for a lot of problems that we have in our own life? That are self-inflicted problems. A lot of self-inflicted wounds that are out there. And I'm not saying that every single uh, homeless person made bad decisions and are drug addicts. But a lot of them and a lot of other people that are impoverished and in the, in the circumstances that they are can be because of bad decisions that they made in their life and their self-inflicted wounds. Uh, We also talked about last week, money cannot buy you everything. Money can't buy you lasting joy. It can't purchase your salvation. It can't bring enduring comfort. It can't bring healing. It can't solve your problems. And you can't take it with you to heaven. You're not going to be taking a a U-Haul or a, a... a withdrawal slip in your hand when the trumpet sounds. You're going to leave everything behind and someone else behind you is going to take it or it's going to burn up one day. Now that brings us up to where we left off and we were in the book of Luke. So if you would now turn to Luke chapter 12. 
Luke chapter 12 in verse number 15. Luke chapter 12 in verse number 15. And we'll kind of catch us up to where we left off last week. Luke chapter 12 and verse number 15. The Bible says this in Luke chapter 12 and uh, verse number 15. It says, And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the, what's the next word? Things, the things which he possesseth. Things, people, people are consumed with the materialism of their life and heaping up to themselves things. And once again, it's not bad to have guns. It's not bad to have hobbies if you like fishing and all that. But once again, it's if those things have you. Someone said, someone said the best day for fishing is on Sunday morning. I wouldn't know because every Sunday morning I'm in church. I was expecting more amens from that, but we'll move on. Someone said this. Someone said that kept missing church because of fishing. They said they're going to name their boat Visitation. So if anybody asks them, they're out on visitation. And so they wouldn't get any judgmental glances and uh, anybody would talk with them. But things, uh, the Bible here in, in, our, in our text, apparently this rich man, this unnamed rich man, had a problem with things that he possessed and being consumed with things. And verse number 16 goes on to say, And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. Now this is Jesus Christ speaking to his disciples. He's instructing them when they, before they start their ministry and they uh, begin their work for Christ. He's reminding them, listen, there's something that can potentially destroy your effectiveness, can destroy your ministries, and a lot of other things, guys. It's things. It's covetousness. It's the love of money. And then he goes on to illustrate this point using a parable. In verse number 17, the Bible says, And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou what? Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Now let me just say a big pause and time out. The Bible here, don't get it mixed up, is not talking about being frugal. It's not talking against uh, uh, having a retirement plan, having life insurance saved up for your spouse if you decease. The, the principle, the heart of the issue, the reason why God in, in verse number 20 calls this man thou fool is because... Look what he thought. He thought his riches were, were something more than what they truly were. Temporal. Temporal. I think the heart of the issue that God is trying to uh, lay forth to his disciples and to you and I tonight is riches. The reality of riches. They are so temporal. They're temporal. He goes on to say, he says, This night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then... Whose shall those, what's the next word? Things. The things earlier in our chapter in verse 15 that God's saying, Hey disciples, before you start your ministry, don't be consumed with things. The things that you and people get consumed with today. Pile up for themselves today. Who shall those things be which thou hast provided? Do you know what the Lord's saying? What are, what's going to happen to those things when you're dead? When you're dead and your soul's required of thee, you're going to leave those things to somebody. You can't take them with you. So is he that layeth up. So is he. What does that mean? So is he. Someone that's like that man is a fool like that man. So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward who? God. You're looking at riches the wrong way. People today are just put their head down trying to get rich in this realm. When God's saying, listen, you need to focus on being wealthy where it matters in, in eternity. 
in eternity. The Bible goes on to say later in the, in, in, the, in the Gospels, it says, Lay not up for yourself treasures on earth where thief does steal, moth and rust doth corrupt. Don't be consumed with heaping up to yourself things that have no eternal value and is temporal. That's what the Bible here is, is talking about. This man had the wrong mentality. He kept saying, my goods and my fruit and my bounty. you got to understand something. Piggybacking off the message on Sunday night, our life and everything that that entails is not our own. It's God's. God, being just a, a wonderful, loving, merciful, gracious God, is asking of us to not rob from him in Malachi to give him a percentage of what's already his anyway. And we understand that our life, our resources, everything belongs to God. It's not ours to begin with. And in 2 Peter chapter 3, if you would turn there, if not, it will be on the screen. 2 Peter chapter 3, I encourage you to look at it in your Bible so you can make mark of it. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse number 10, the Bible says this, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the element shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be, what's the next two words? Burned up. I know the context is dealing with our works and what we've done with our lives. I understand the context. But some people work their entire life to heap up to themselves. Their works has no eternal value. They're not using their, their blood, sweat, tears, time, and energy trying to tell someone about the gospel, disciple someone, to take their works that they've done and make it into eternity, eternal value. People today, their works that are going to be burned up are working for things. And I believe that, that could apply to the possessions and materialism too. They're all going to be burned up one day. The earth and everything in the earth, including the wealth the things and possessions that people are consumed with. It's going to be burned up. That yacht, it's going to be burned up. The riches, the money, the, the clothes, the cars, all of that, it's going to burn up. Unless it's a Toyota, they, they survive everything. Anybody have a Toyota here? Anyway, it's a different story. Uh, 2 Corinthians, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and if you look at it in verse number 18. These verses are just saying the same thing. I want you to see it. It's, it's mentioned multiple times in the Bible. 2 Corinthians 4.18 says this. While we look not at the, what's the next word? Things, the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are what? Temporal. The temporal. But the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. The things, we're talking about things tonight, things that we possess, the wretches, the wealth, the, all of that, the things. The Bible says everything, the things that you can see with your human eye, the naked eye today, it's temporal. It doesn't matter. Yes, we need cars because that's a tool. That's a tool to get us to work, get us to church. Uh, uh, clothes, it's nice to have clothes, okay? If not, you'd go to jail, all right? Uh, food, anybody like eating here today? Yes, those are all things that are, are needed. But the things that, things that people just chase after and covet after and be consumed with, the temporal. The things which are not seen. Now, you didn't know this tonight. This is going to be a, where you talk back at me tonight, okay? What are some things that you can't see? When the Bible says things that aren't seen, those are eternal. What are some of those things? Anybody want to just yell it out? What are some of those things? Anybody? I think I hear somebody, but not loud enough. What is it? Faith? Okay, yeah. You have faith. can't really see uh, faith. You can see the outward, uh, the actions of faith, but faith. Anything else? Blessings? Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, that's great. Bringing someone to Christ and the Holy Spirit of God moving and, and growth, growth in people's life. Those are all things that you can't see with your naked eye, but the Bible attributes as being eternal and not temporal. Those are the things that we should be 
investing in and focusing on. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18, the Bible says this. For as much as ye know that ye were not, what's the next word? Redeemed. Redeemed with, what's the next two words? Corruptible things. As silver and gold in our modern time and vernacular, it's money, credit card, all that. From your vain conversation, uh, for your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. You know what we should be focusing on is like, like Ms. Warple said, bringing people to salvation. And that is something that we cannot redeem ourselves. People today think that because of their wealth, because of the money that they give to the cause of Christ and the charity and the church and the homeless shelters and give it away and donate it, it's not going to redeem them from heaven, uh, redeem them to heaven, redeem them from their, their sins. The only thing that redeemed us was the blood of Jesus Christ. And we can't, we can't redeem ourselves with corruptible things. And then uh, three more verses and then we'll wrap it up. J- uh, Job chapter 15. Job chapter 15, verse number 29. Job 15, 29 says this. The Bible says, He shall not be rich, neither shall his substance. What's the next word? Continue. Continue. Neither shall he prolong the perfection thereof upon the earth. You know what? Your substance, the wealth, your estate and all that, it's not going to continue once you pass away. And people today just focus on it, they're consumed with it, and they have a love for it. Uh, Proverbs 27, 24. Proverbs 27, 24, the Bible says, For riches are not forever. Riches are not forever. We're talking about the temporalness of riches. And these verses clearly say they're not going to last forever. He shall not, uh, for riches are not forever. And doth the crown endure to every generation? Proverbs 23, 5 says this. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. And all these verses talking about the same thing. Riches aren't forever. They won't follow you to heaven. They won't follow you in the grave. I've heard some crazy stories crazy stories and if one of these are your relatives i'm telling you some crazy stories from my family okay uh but if you have any any of these relatives i'm not trying to be insensitive but i've heard of people being buried inside of their cadillacs i've heard of people buried on their harleys or having their you know their nice rolexes and their nice jewelry buried with them i mean if that meant something to them if you were coming from it like with a sentimental value purpose i could kind of see where you're going with that but i'm not trying to be mean or disrespectful to the dead grandpa's not driving his harley to heaven okay that harley is going to rot in the ground with grandpa people have just a mixed up idea of what we're talking about tonight i've already told you last week told you last week if you want to know how truly temporal our money is research how the money is even accounted for in our nation today that paper dollar you pull out of your wallet it only means it's worth that because the government and treasury says it does the more they keep printing it off the more that piece of paper turns into kindle to start a fire And people are going to just put all their eggs into the financial asset value of the world when all it takes is another Great Depression to make that thing worthless. Worthless. People like the rich man in the Bible coming so close to being saved. In the Bible, Bible, uh, literally says that Jesus says, there's one thing that thou thou lackest. The rich young ruler, you've heard of him? Man, he, he did a lot of good things, didn't he? I mean, he kept his com- the commandments since his youth. Uh, he's done a lot of good things. But the one thing that the Lord could see in time out, the Lord was not telling him, you will be saved and on your way to heaven if you just give away all of your goods. The Lord sees not like we see. He saw his heart, and the thing that was keeping his heart from a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ was his wealth and riches. 
He was telling him that so he, not for Jesus' sake, he knew the problem. He wanted to tell the man that to let him know his own problem. And because of his riches, it, it bothered him. When he heard that, man, i got to give away everything that I've worked hard for, everything that I've inherited. Man, that's, he walked away. He went to hell, a rich man, but he wasn't rich toward God, friend. Let me just say that. Someone that's a millionaire in the eyes of God is someone that has given their heart and life to Jesus Christ, trusted him for salvation, turned to him in repentance and faith, believing on him as their savior. That person is a very, very rich man, very rich person. Someone that understands that there is a blessed blessing waiting for someone as we give to God. And we don't give to God just to get back. But isn't it awesome to know that God being just an awesome God, as we give, he decides to give back, press down, it's overflowing and just abundantly? Man. But someone that has money has them. Man, they, you have to pry it out of their, their, their cold, hard hands to get them to give to the Lord when it's his already. On the, on, the other, on the other side, on the other side of it, not just talk about not giving your money, but some people that definitely aren't rich toward God, they try everything they can. Because I'm telling you what, a lot of people, not everybody, not everybody, but I've had some experiences with this. People that have a lot, sometimes, not everybody, but sometimes people that have a lot, some of the stingiest, most stingy people there are. But then you have like someone brought up Sunday morning and Sunday school. Then you have like a widow that gives the widow's might. I'm telling you what, it didn't hurt that person. It didn't hurt them to give off the top. They got a little ac- excess that week. But the Lord was more impressed with a widow who gave a mite. And she gave when it hurt. I mean, she was probably giving up her grocery money in that plate. She was probably giving up her, her, her rent and her mortgage payment, and she had no idea how she was going to make it up. But God looked at that heart. We're not just talking about finances. We're talking about the heart behind the person with finances. Looked at her heart and said, that's an acceptable sacrifice that I'm pleased with. Look, the perception of riches is, if I just have riches, everything will be okay. The reality is, man, it's so temporal. Why would you put all your eggs in that basket? It's going to burn up one day. I'd rather be rich toward God and have my time, my life, my energy, my resources, my treasures be invested into eternity. We'll go ahead and uh, have a word of prayer, and then we'll be dismissed. Um, to give you just a, just a few more details about the missionary, Brother Todd, who called earlier. Uh, he's coming back. His wife has got fibromyalgia and copper poisoning. They said that she's had it when she was a teenager. And it, she's just put it off, and it's gotten worse. And now she's, her face is numb, her feet are numb. It's just a, in, a, in a bad way. So they said it could take up anywhere from two to three years, so they're off the field. He did say that he's got a really nice, really good job that's paying them very, very well. Their home church in Dayton, Ohio, is really taking care of them. And he's saying that he's calling around for churches to temporarily suspend their support. And we'll, we'll talk about that as, um, as men, and we'll get back with you on that. But just keep him in your prayers. He's working a full-time job, second shift. He gets home at 3 a.m., and then he's got to take care of his wife who's laid up, and he's got three small kids. So, man, just keep them in your prayers. And also, don't want to leave anybody out. Continue to pray for Dr. Ray's sister, Sandra, um, Ernest Nichols, and then Mrs. Longworth's grandchildren, Riker and Christopher. Continue to pray for Homer Brewington, Mrs. Wooster's father, um, Becky Nichols. Last, last week we heard from Ms. Fitzsimmons that she's kind of taken a step backwards, not, still not able to speak, walk, or swallow. Just please keep her in your prayers. Josh King, continue to pray for him as he goes forward with the, with the tumor on his esophagus. Tim Lapato's dad with uh, Alzheimer's, 
Shannon McDonald, Terry Waltemeyer's niece, um, Mr. McNamara's brother and sister-in-law that were in a car accident, really banged up. Um, Josh Collins with cancer's left kidney. Um, and then we, Christy Bowers, we talked about her uh, earlier. And then Amber Doan, the wealthiest neighbor with breast cancer. All right, we'll go ahead and pray. And um, I'll call on a few men from the floor. And then we'll, we'll be dismissed. Um, let's see here. Brother Mike. Brother Mike Williams, would you start us off, please, sir? Would you go first? Um, let's see here. Brother Tar, would you pray second? And then let's see. Brother um, Reamer, would you pray third to close us out, please?